the advent of 5G, the Internet of Things that we've talked about so often, only going to require billions and billions more chips than already exist. As you know, they go into virtually everything because you're going to be able to have whatever they go into communicate with the edge of the network in a way there's no latency and it's going to allow for a lot more efficiency. But again, it goes to your point, uh, chip shortages perhaps for quite some time. Right. Now, people have to know that the Chinese order a lot of chips and uh, they were, uh, uh, just in case we were just in time, they ordered a ton uh, from Taiwan. You have to, uh, there's a major flashpoint going on, too. Don't forget, Taiwan's in the midst of a big geopolitical struggle. Uh, I had Secretary Mondo last week from a Commerce Department. They want to be able to build foundries here. Uh, foundries take two years to build from scratch, and there are back orders for all the equipment. Land research is probably doing more than almost anyone. And they, you can't get a land research machine to be able to make semis. Uh, the back orders are ridiculous. So, yeah, David, this is a... A very key moment for the semiconductor industry and also for American industry. Uh, and it's not just cars. That's the point. I had Micron wrong last week. Uh, DRAM has now uh, has been tight. But now Flash is getting tight. So uh, look out. This is some big squeeze that's going to last for time. Long time. Hmm. Yeah, I guess the, the debate will be how long, Jim. There's the opening bell. And the S&P 500 at the bottom of your screen, 40 47, I think, will be uh, an all-time high to get out the gate, Jeez. as we expected. Same story for the Dow. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.